Let's talk about what's happening in Sudan. Rival forces remain locked in a power struggle despite international calls for a ceasefire. It's an all-out battle for control of the country between Sudan's army and a paramilitary unit known as the Rapid Support Forces, the RSF, led by men who used to be allies. Hundreds of people have been killed, and hundreds have been injured. There's fighting in different parts of Sudan, but it's heaviest in the capital, Khartoum. There have been attempts at a ceasefire, but they haven't lost it. There have been air attacks and shelling. The airport has been severely damaged. There's no running water or electricity. Supplies of food are running low. This ridiculous battle that has civilians caught in the middle. And we have nothing to do with this. So what's behind the fighting? Well, people in Sudan have been struggling to set up a democracy after decades under one-man rule. Omar al-Bashir came to power in a military coup in the late 1980s, became president, and stayed for 30 years, until people rose up and demanded that he step down. Then the army took over, and people didn't want them in charge either. So after pressure from protesters, the army agreed to share power with different political groups in a transitional government. The idea was that it would oversee a transition to a democratic system. But two years later, the army kicked out the prime minister and seized power again. The people in Sudan seem to be trapped in this limbo and they're going around and around in a circle that involves the same people, you know, with no clear path or trajectory on how they can actually start to plan. Uh, for a transition. There have been ongoing talks to make that transition happen between the military and political groups representing that pro-democracy movement. But a major reason the process is being held up is because of an underlying rivalry between the army and the rapid support forces that have become like a second army. And many people see this as a personal rivalry between the army's leader, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, who's effectively the leader of the country, and the leader of the RSF, General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalu, widely known as Hemeti. The thing is, for years, both men were on the same side and had been since the war in Darfur. Hemeti led a militia at the time widely known as the Janjaweed, and they were used by al-Bashir's army to fight rebels in the region of Darfur. They were created to protect the upper echelon of the military and the senior commanders. They're accused of carrying out war crimes there, and al-Bashir actually got charged with committing genocide. In 2013, the militia were rebranded as the Rapid Support Forces and worked with the army on different missions. Then, in 2019, Hemeti and General al-Burhan joined up to get rid of al-Bashir. And during the big pro-democracy protests, the RSF and the army were accused of killing more than 100 people. But since then, the RSF has been acting a lot more independently, and they've grown more powerful. They were able to establish vast investments uh, around the country and outside the country, especially in the gold trade. These two main actors, uh, the army and the rapid support forces, were able to collude you know, now successfully for about four years uh, to stay in power themselves, but there was always that core tension um, about who was the top dog between them. So that brings us to the fighting right now. As part of Sudan's transition to democracy, there have been talks about integrating the RSF into the army, but they can't agree over the timeline. The army proposed two years, while the RSF wanted it to be 10. The army, um, you know, had been making a stand. Uh, they realized that the, the rapid support forces uh, have been growing. Um, the head, General Hemeti, has political ambitions himself. Um, and I think there was a sense that if they did not somehow force uh, the rapid support forces to agree to integrate and to and to go under them, that this force would keep growing and, and grow out of the control of the formal military. It's unclear who started the fighting, but on April 15th, both sides started trading accusations that they had attacked each other's bases in Khartoum. Then, they fought to take control of the presidential palace, the airport, and the state TV channel. The army has air power, and they've been hitting RSF bases in the capital, many of them in residential areas. The RSF don't have planes, 
but they do have anti-aircraft weapons and they have about 100,000 men. There have been plenty of calls for the fighting to stop, from Sudan's neighbors, the African Union, the UN, the EU, the US, and the UK. And there could be some leverage from countries like Egypt, which has been a close ally to the Sudanese army, and on the other side, the UAE, which has ties to the RSF. But there's no sign that either side wants to back down. Right now, for a lot of people, it's, it, this is, it's a period of confusion. It's a period of uh, uncertainty um, about what's going to happen in the next few minutes, the next few hours, the next few days. And uh, it's a period of war, and they have nowhere to turn to. A lot of people in Sudan are scared, heartbroken, and frustrated. Their country keeps getting derailed off that path towards democracy. It's a hope that seems even more distant now.